Everyone knows that the power of the Rinnegan is insane, almost to an unreasonable degree. But there's one particular jutsu of the Rinnegan that nobody ever talks about, and it's arguably the strongest jutsu of the eye. Of course I'm talking about the Soul Dragon. We only see that jutsu once, but for that time, it's already enough for us to understand that this is not a simple jutsu, it's actually much more powerful than any other thing the paths have to offer, except maybe for Chibaku Tensei. And Rina Tensei, but let's be real, Rina Tensei isn't like that, it's more of a support technique to resuscitate someone, so yeah. But this soul dragon acts kinda like the human path. It touches someone, and then this person's soul is sucked out of this person's body, and the person dies. Instantly. I've already made a video about the human path and why it's so OP, but this is human path on steroids. I mean, it's this huge dragon spat by the ghetto Mazu that can hit an entire army and kill people at once, like an absurd amount of people. And what's better or worse, <laughs> you cannot technically block this thing because it's an ethereal attack. It doesn't have physical mass, it's just this dragon that can pass through things and suck your soul. The only thing you can do is run. Nagato wipes out an entire platoon of Leaf Anbu members and Hanzo's guys in that battle when Hiahiko dies and all that. He absolutely destroys them with ease. And we're kind of shocked when we see that jutsu for the first time because it's so powerful and absurd. It, it literally touches you and kills you. They even state that in the fight the Ambu ninjas are terrified because it's touching them and it's killing them. So they're trying to run away, but they're absolutely failing to do so and dying. Introducing abilities like this in a story is very complicated because an ability that can kill you just by touching you and there is not much you can do about it is really OP and difficult to handle in a fight. It can kind of break the power system in your universe if this single ability can kill anyone that touches it. It's kind of like the dark snow and seven deadly sins that's used once and never used it again because it's just snow that falls and if somebody touches it, the person dies. And you can even argue that the Avada Kedavra spell is pretty much the same thing. It instantly kills you in Harry Potter and let's be real, this is probably the worst spell in the Harry Potter series that kind of makes the battles in that series very stale. And that's pretty much the reason why other characters don't use this ability, at least out of universe. Kishimoto wouldn't really want every single character that has a Rinnegan to have an ability that can essentially one-shot the entire battlefield without them being able to do anything except for running away. The only survivor in the fight where Nagato uses the dragon is Hanzo because he teleports out of the battlefield. The others, they can't do much about it. So let's say Obito or even Madara pulls off that dragon and starts to mow people down with it. It wouldn't be very interesting <laughs> because, well, even though Madara destroys the entire battalion when he arrives with two gargantuan meteors, at least Onoki and Gara were able to somewhat stop the first meteor so that it wouldn't crush them and then the second meteor came and did it anyway but at least they could resist it with that dragon there's nothing they could ever done i mean running away is an option but it doesn't really make for a very compelling battle imagine if mother had arrived in the fourth battalion battlefield and used that dragon and then everybody's souls just get sucked out of their bodies and they just die unceremoniously and a couple of them are able to run away because of course some would but still it wouldn't be as grandiose as the Meteor, for example. Instant kill abilities are not all bad. I mean, the Raikiri can be an instant kill ability, for example, but the problem with this particular type of ability, mechanically speaking in the story, is that there is no defense. And this can be terrifying, but 
It also leads to very big problems in the investment of a particular fight. So Kishimoto was very wise to use this only once, and it was used in a moment where we saw Nagato's full might and anger in that moment of shock when he kinda killed Yahiko. And so we see this gargantuan soul dragon devouring these men with Nagato's anger, essentially. That moment was supposed to feel terrifying, we were supposed to be afraid of Nagato's powers and see him almost like a god. And it was a flashback, so having that in a flashback isn't something we're gonna be weirded out by, because it's already happened, so it's not as though he's gonna pull that off against people in the Leaf Village, for example. But of course, there's also the in-universe explanation as to why this dragon wasn't used. And this time, the in-universe explanation is actually really solid. The prerequisites for you to use that dragon are steep. First, of course, you have to have the Rinnegan. That's a given and only a very small number of people have ever had access to the Rinnegan. So it's obvious that we're not going to see that jutsu very often, or even people that can use that jutsu. But still, Nagato is the only one who uses it. However, remember, you have to also summon the Ghetto Mazo in order to perform the jutsu, and have the Ghetto Mazo pierce you with a billion Rinnegan rods all over your body, which is very debilitating. It can hurt you, it will make you suffer, and it also spends a gargantuan amount of chakra. Nagato is drooling after he uses that jutsu from chakra expenditure, essentially. So it's not a jutsu without risk. Also, the fact that you have to get pierced by the Rinnegan rods, it doesn't make the jutsu any better for you to use. So let's analyze the other characters that had the Rinnegan and never used this jutsu. First, we have Obito. Now remember, the Ghetto Mazo is necessary for the Jutsu to work, and Obito, when he had the Rinnegan, well, the Ghetto Mazo was doing something more important for him. It was bringing back the Tantail, so he couldn't use the Ghetto Mazo to use that Jutsu against Gai, Kakashi, Naruto, and B, for example. He could have used it against the Alliance, I mean, he brings the Ghetto Mazo to the battlefield and wreaks havoc to get back the tools from the Sage of Six Paths with Ginkaku and Ginkaku so that he can use a little bit of the QB Chakra and all that, but he uses the power of the Ghetto Mazo anyway with that lightning strikes and all that, so you could argue that using the Soul Dragon would be overkill and Obito wouldn't be wanting to do that because he would have to pierce himself with the Rinnegan Rods and run his chakra very low because we even see in the fight against Gai, Kakashi, B, and Naruto that Obito doesn't really use his Rinnegan abilities because they take too much chakra. And that's the base abilities of the Rinnegan. So if you talk about that stupendous dragon, yeah, that's gonna drain him up very, very quickly. So Obito wouldn't use the Ghetto Mazo to do that in the first place, and also, the Ghetto Mazo was busy invoking the Dentails back to reality or whatever. Now let's take a look at Madara. Well, when we first get introduced to Madara, he is an Edo Tensei, and we know that Edo Tenseis cannot summon the Ghetto Mazo. That is stated by Matatabi when Madara actually summons the Ghetto Mazo when he's about to fight against the Tail Beast and use Limbo and all that, but that was after he was brought back via Rina Tensei. It is stated that Madara couldn't use the Ghetto Mazo and summon it because he didn't have the real Rinnegan. He had the fake eyes that were imbued into the fake Edo Tensei body. Sure, they mimicked a lot of the Rinnegan's powers, but they didn't have the entire power available to them, so they couldn't summon the Ghetto Mazo. And then, of course, Madara wouldn't be able to do that jutsu, and also the Ghetto Mazo was busy summoning the Ten Tails anyway in that time. But then Madara gets revived, and he even summons the Ghetto Mazu, so why wouldn't Madara do that? I mean, he was fighting against a lot of people, technically, I mean, they ran away before Madara engaged with the other tail beasts, but still, that was a powerful jutsu, and Madara obviously has more chakra than Nagato, so what doesn't he use that? Well, it's basically the same reason as Obito. He needed the Ghetto Mazo to gather the tail beast so that he himself could turn into the Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails. Besides, Madara is a very theatrical fighter. He likes to be elegant, 
Not always. He even stated that with Hashirama's regeneration, he doesn't really have to fight with elegance. But still, having a billion Rinnegan rods piercing his body isn't something I think Madara would have enjoyed doing. Even though he tends to enjoy a little pain, having to do that in order to perform a jutsu would feel a little humiliating for him, and that's not the sort of thing that he likes to feel. But basically, the revived Madara state doesn't last for very long because it quickly gathers the tail beast and turns into the Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails, and then, well, the Keromazo is technically inside of him, meaning he can't use the Jutsu anymore, or maybe now, when he was the Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails, he could technically just use the Jutsu without needing to do that connecting with the Rinnegan Rods in the first place. That would be very cool to see, but unfortunately, Madara's fight against Team 7 was cut short by Black Zetsu and the worst plot twist in the history of fiction. We then have Sasuke, our final Rinnegan user. And he also never really uses the Jutsu of the Soul Dragon. By the way, we don't actually know the name of that Jutsu because Nagato never says it, so I'm just referring it as a Soul Dragon Jutsu, but anyway. And the reason for Sasuke is pretty much the same, really. When Sasuke awakens the Rinnegan, the Ghetto Mazo is inside of Madara, so he can't summon it to use the Jutsu in the first place. And also, maybe Sasuke wouldn't even know he had that Jutsu with the Rinnegan because he's had the Rinnegan for like a couple of minutes, you know? So it wouldn't be the first thing he probably would think of. And then when he fights Naruto in the Valley of the End, the Ghetto Mazo doesn't exist anymore because it was sealed with Kaguya. So Sasuke can't even summon it. That's why he has to use his Susano to gather the chakra of all tail beast in that fight. He doesn't use the Ghetto Mazu because the Ghetto Mazu isn't available, and that's confirmed by the Nine Tails when she is talking to Naruto about what Sasuke is doing, gathering the chakra of the tail beast and using the Indra Susano. So Sasuke never really even had the chance of using the Jutsu in the first place. Still, Maybe Nagato could have used that jutsu more, but we see that after Nagato used the jutsu for the first time and beats Hanzo's goons and Danzo's goons as well, he gets a little bit of, well, frail, let's say. He cannot move properly anymore, and he is kind of confined to that space where he controls the paths of pain. And of course, Nagato himself has to be the one using that jutsu. It cannot be done through a path of pain because they are technically fake bodies and they wouldn't be able to summon the Ghetto Mazo. And Nagato only used the paths of pain after that point. He never really fought in his normal state up until he was brought back via Edo Tensei, and as I mentioned before, you cannot summon the Ghetto Mazo via Edo Tensei, so he couldn't use that jutsu as well. So there you have it, that's why people never use that jutsu again, and why Kishimoto thought it was a good idea, well, not to bring up that jutsu anymore. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, and watch this other video right here to find out more about the OP Renegon abilities. Thank you so much for watching.